Before we finish with the igneous and metamorphic rock types, let's look at two more which give clues as to their origin when we find them in field situations. No bedding, irregular jointing, but no contact visible. And of course it's a very pink colour. If we look at a freshly broken surface, we can see that it contains abundant pink felspars and white felspars. Its crystalline texture and medium grain size would seem to indicate to me that it could be a microgranite. A thin section that we collected on an earlier trip confirms this. In thin section, the rock is medium grained with a crystalline texture and although quite weathered, it's still possible to make out fresh quartz and twinned potassium and plagioclase feldspar. Any micas present have been altered to secondary minerals. The grain size, mineralogy and texture confirm that it is indeed a microgranite. A reasonable hypothesis is that the rock was once a magma and from extensive work on granites we know that they called as intrusions at depth, only reaching the surface when exposed by uplift or erosion or a combination of the two. But of course, igneous rocks are not the only rocks that are formed at depth. Whilst many granites crystallise at a depth of about 5 to 10 kilometres, this rock has probably formed at much greater depth, perhaps 15 to 20 kilometres. It's still a crystalline rock, but if I was to look at it in a slice of the rock in this orientation, I'd see it's actually very different. There's quite a pronounced preferred orientation of the minerals in this rock. How do I form that? If I start with a sediment that's rich in clay minerals, like a mudstone, and subject it to an increase in temperature and pressure, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to start to recrystallize. And as it does so, if the pressure is operating in this orientation, the platy minerals, like micas and so on, will find it easier to develop in that orientation there. And so, in essence, the long axes of these micas will be arranged in a parallel alignment, creating what we refer to as a foliation. It's a very characteristic feature of regionally metamorphosed rocks. There's one crucial difference between this rock and the granite, though. Whereas the granite forms as a magma and crystallizes in, in essence from a liquid, this rock is largely formed in the solid state. The end product of this rock is one which has a, this beautiful alignment of minerals, and I can see it here in this specimen. This very pronounced sheen is a, a totally diagnostic of mica schists, and on that basis, that's what I'm going to call it. Here are some more examples of mica schists as you might find them in the field. Often folded and refolded, there's good evidence of tectonic activity to be found in these ancient rocks. <laughs> 